Aiden Anthos Cuneatus, Wikipedia article audio. Aiden Anthos Cuneatus, also known as coastal jug flower, flame bush, bridal bush, and sweat bush, is a shrub of the family Proteaceae native to the south coast of Western Australia. The French naturalist Jacques Le Billardier originally described it in 1805. Within the genus Aden anthos, it lies in the section Aden anthos and is most closely related to Astictus. Acuniatus has hybridized with four other species of Aden anthos. Growing to 2 m high and wide, it is erect to prostrate in habit, with wedge shaped lobed leaves covered in fine silvery hair. The single red flowers are insignificant, and appear all year though especially in late spring. The reddish new growth occurs over the summer. It is sensitive to Phytophthoracinomomy dieback, hence requiring a sandy soil and good drainage to grow in cultivation, its natural habitat of sandy soils in heathland being an example. Its pollinators include bees, honey possum, silver eye, and honey eaters, particularly the western spine bill. Acuniatus is grown in gardens in Australia and the western United States, and a dwarf and prostrate form are commercially available. Description Taxonomy Aden anthos cuneatus grows as an erect, spreading or prostrate shrub to 2 m high and wide. It has a woody base known as a lignotuber, from which it can res peer out after bush fire. The wedge-shaped leaves are on short petioles, and are 2 cm long and 1 1.5 cm wide, with 3 to 5 rounded teeth or lobes at the ends. New growth is red and slightly translucent. It glows bright red against the light, especially when the sun is low in the sky. New growth is mainly seen in summer, and the leaves in general are covered with fine, silvery hair. Occurring throughout the year but more often from August to November, the insignificant single flowers are a dull red in color and measure around 4 cm long. The pollen is triangular in shape and measures 3144 mm in length, averaging around 34 mm. The species is similar in many ways to its close relative Astictus. The most obvious difference is in habit, the multi-stemmed, Lignotuberus acuneatus rarely grows over 2 m in height, whereas Astictus is a taller single-stemmed non-Lignotuberus shrub that commonly reaches 5 m in height. Leaves are similar, but the lobes at the leaf apex are regular and crenate in acuneatus but irregular and dentate in Astictus. Also, new growth does not have a red flush in Astictus, and juvenile leaves of Astictus are usually much larger than adult leaves, a difference not seen in Acuneatus. The flowers of the two species are very similar, differing only subtly in dimension, color, and indumentum. Although the precise time and location of its discovery are unknown, Jacques Le Billardier, botanist to an expedition under Bruni d'Entrecastos, which anchored in Esperance Bay on the south coast of Western Australia on December 9, 1792, most likely collected the first known botanical specimen of Aden anthos cuneatus on December 16 while searching the area between Observatory Point and Pink Lake for the zoologist Claude Risch, who had gone ashore two days earlier and failed to return. Following an unsuccessful search the following day, several senior members of the expedition were convinced that Risch must have perished of thirst or at the hands of the Australian Aborigines and counselled D'Entrecastos to sail without him. However, Le Billardier convinced D'Entrecastos to search for another day, and was rewarded not only with the recovery of Risch, but also with the collection of several highly significant botanical specimens, 
including the first specimens of Anigazanthos and Nutsia floribunda and, as aforementioned, Acuneatus. Thirteen years passed before Le Billardier published a formal description of Acuneatus, and in the meantime several further collections were made. Scottish botanist Robert Brown collected a specimen on December 30, 1801, during the visit of HMS investigator to King George Sound, and, fourteen months later, Jean Baptiste Le Chanel de la Tour botanist to Nicolas Baudin's Voyage of Exploration, and gardener's boy Antoine Guichinot collected more specimens therein. The official account of Baudin's expedition contain notes from Le Chenault on vegetation. Sur les bords de la mer, Croissant, and Grande Abondance, L. Aden Anthos Cuniata, L. Aden Anthos Sericea au Fouillage Volute, Et un espèce du même genre dont les fuilles sont arrondies. Discovery and Naming Le Billardier eventually published the genus Aden Anthos, along with Acuniatus and two other species, in his 1805 Novi Hollandia plant arum specimen. He chose the specific name Cuniata in reference to the leaves of this species, which are cuniate. This name has feminine gender, consistent with the gender assigned by Le Billardier to the genus. He did not designate which of the three published species was to serve as the type species of Aden Anthos, but Irish botanist E. Charles Nelson has since chosen Acuniatus as lectotype for the genus, since the holotype of Acuniatus bears an annotation showing the derivation of the genus name and because Le Billardier's description of it is the most detailed of the three, and is referred to by the other descriptions. Synonymy In 1809, Richard Salisbury, writing under Joseph Knight's name in the controversial on the cultivation of the plants belonging to the natural order of Protea, published the name Aden and this Flabellifolia listing Acuniata as a synonym. As no type specimen was given, and no specimen annotated by Knight could be found, this was treated as a nomenclatural synonym of Acuniata and was therefore rejected on the principle of priority. Also synonymized with this species is Aden Anthos Crenata, published by Carl Ludwig Wildenau S. in Kurt Polycarp Joachim Sprengel S. 1825 16th edition of Systema Vegetabilium. Wildenau published both Acuniata and Acranata, giving them different descriptions but designating the same type specimen for both. Thus Acranata was rejected under the principle of priority, and is now regarded as a nomenclatural synonym of Acuniatus. In 1870, George Bentham published the first infrageneric arrangement of Aden Anthos in Volume 5 of his landmark Flora Australiensis. He divided the genus into two sections, placing Acuniata in a sect. Stenolaema because its perianth tube is straight and not swollen above the middle. This arrangement still stands today, though a sect. Stenolaema is now renamed to the autonym a sect. Aden anthos. Infragenaric placement. A phonetic analysis of the genus undertaken by Nelson in 1975 yielded results in which Acuniatus was grouped with Astictus. This pairing was then neighbor to a larger group that included A. forestii, A. Are, A. cacomorphus, A. ilticos, and several hybrid and unusual forms of Acuniatus. Nelson's analysis supported Bentham's sections and so they were retained when Nelson published a taxonomic revision of the genus in 1978. He further subdivided a sect, Aden Anthos into two subsections, with Acuniata placed into a subsect. Aden Anthos for reasons including the length of its perianth, 
but Nelson discarded his own subsections in his 1995 treatment of Aden Anthos, for the Flora of Australia series of monographs. By this time, the ICBN had issued a ruling that all genera ending in anthos must be treated as having masculine gender, thus the specific epithet became cuneatus. Hybrids The placement of a cuneatus in Nelson's arrangement of Aden anthos may be summarized as follows. Common Names Aden anthos cuneatus apparently forms hybrids with other Aden anthos species quite readily, as four putative natural hybrids have been reported. This species has several common names, some highly localized. Two names allude to its consumption by horses, bridal bush, a name used east of Esperance, refers to the fact that horses favor it as fodder, and sweat bush used around Hope Tune, derived from the claim that horses break out in sweat after consuming young growth. The common name of flame bush derives from the brilliant red new growth. It is also known as coastal jug flower. Nelson also records the use of the names Temple Tanya and Native Temp, but ridicules them as obvious errors. Distribution and Habitat the most widely distributed Aden anthos species of the south coast, Acuniatus is common and locally abundant between King George Sound and Israelite Bay, along the coast and up to 40 km inland, with isolated populations extending west to Walpole and the Stirling Range, and as far east of Israelite Bay as Twilight Cove. This species is restricted to silicious sand plain soils and will not grow in calcareous soils such as the limestone plains of the Null Arbor, or even silicious dunes with limestone at little depth. This restriction explains the disjunctions east of Israelite Bay, the species occurs only in those few locations where the existence of clifftop dunes of deep silicious sand provide suitable habitat. Provided the soil is silicious and fairly dry, Acuniatus tolerates a range of edaphic conditions, it grows in both lateritic sand and sands of marine origin, and it tolerates pH levels ranging from 3.8 to 6.6. .6. Consistent with these edaphic preferences, Acuniatus is a frequent and characteristic member of the Quangan heathlands commonly found on the sand plains of southwest Australia. The climate in its range is Mediterranean, with annual rainfall from 275 to 1000 mm. Colleted bees of the genus Lyoproctus visit Aden anthos cuneatus flowers. A 1978 field study conducted around Albany found the honey possum occasionally visited Aden anthos cuneatus, while the western spinebill much preferred the species to other flowers. A 1980 field study at Cheney Beach showed that the New Holland honeyeater and white-cheeked honeyeater pollinated a 1985-86 field study in the Fitzgerald River National Park found that the nectar-feeding honey possum occasionally eats it. The silver eye feeds on nectar from the flowers, and has also been observed taking dewdrops from leaves early in the morning. Aden anthos cuneatus is known to be susceptible to phytophthoracinomomy dieback, but reports on the degree of susceptibility vary from low to high. A study of Banksia attenuata woodland 400 km southeast of Perth across 16 years, and following a wave of P. cinnamomy infestation, showed that acuneatus populations were not significantly reduced in diseased areas. Phosphite has some toxic effects in acuneatus, with some necrosis of leaf tips, but the shrub uptakes little of the compound when compared with other shrubs. Specimens in coastal dune vegetation showed some sensitivity to the fungus Armillaria luteobubulina, with between a quarter and a half of plants exposed succumbing to the pathogen. Ecology 
Aden Anthos Cuneatus was taken to Great Britain in 1824, and has been grown in cultivation in Australia and the western United States. Its attractive bronzed or reddish foliage is its main horticultural feature, along with its ability to attract birds to the garden. It requires a well-drained position to do well, but will grow in full sun or semi-shade, and tolerates both sand and gravelly soils. George Lull Fitz, a Western Australian nurseryman, recommends growing it as a rambling ground cover in front of other shrubs, or in a rockery. Cultivation The following cultivars exist. A. Times Cunning Amii, a hybrid between A. cuneatus and A. cerisers, was first collected in 1827, and published as A. Cunning Amii in 1845. Other than some dubious collections in the 1830s and 1840s, no further sightings are known to have been made until 1973, when Nelson rediscovered it. At the time it was regarded as a distinct species, but by 1995 it was thought to be a hybrid, and this was confirmed by genetic analysis in 2002. In appearance it is very similar to A. cerisers, but its leaf segments are flat rather than cylindrical, a single plant discovered by Nelson near Israelite Bay, where both putative parents are found is regarded as a hybrid between A. cuneatus and A. dobsonii. Leaves are mostly triangular like those of A. cuneatus, but whereas A. cuneatus leaves are mostly five-lobed, the putative hybrid usually has three lobes, with the occasional leaf being entire like those of A. dobsonii. Leaves of the putative hybrid lack the thick indumentum of A. cuneatus, being bright green with a sparse indumentum like that of A. dobsonii. Flower color is like that of A. cuneatus but the style lacks an indumentum, like A. dobsonii. Two plants found near Twilight Cove are regarded as hybrids between A. cuneatus and A. forestii, the only two Adenanthos species to occur in the area. One was discovered by Nelson in 1972 the other by Alex George in 1974. They are about 5 kilometers apart, and differ somewhat. The leaves are triangular and flat like those of A. cuneatus, but the leaves of mature shoots are very long and narrow, and the leaves of younger shoots are deeply lobed. In his 1995 revision, Nelson refers to putative hybrids with A. dobsonii and A. apiculatus citing the 1978 paper in which he published putative hybrids with A. dobsonii and A. forestii. It is unclear whether the reference to A. A. piculatus is an error or a fourth putative hybrid. A. Coral drift is a compact form in cultivation since at least the 1990s. It is 50-70 cm tall and 1-1.5 m wide. The grey foliage has pinkish-purple new growth, a coral carpet is a prostrate form which peaks at around 20 cm high and spreads to 1.5 m across. The new foliage is a pinkish-purple. A chance seedling from coral drift, it was originally developed by George Lulfitz of Lulfitz Nursery in Wanneroo. It became available to the public in 2005, and has been registered successfully under plant breeders' rights. Footnotes